All right, Helen Yee, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Great. It's an honor to be on your podcast. I've watched quite a few episodes and you do such a great job. And I love your Schmozone shirt. So I'm very uh, happy to be here. That's right. That's right. I'm a big fan of your podcast as well. And I'm representing today. So everybody get out and watch the Schmozone. It's one of the best um, sports, MMA podcasts in the business. And, and uh, you do an amazing job. So thank you for being here today. Listen, you've got a, an incredible story, really. Um, and I, I kind of want to dig into it a bit. We've got to know each other personally over the last few months. Um, and uh, I'm just really um, amazed at your journey. And so kind of talk to us about um, where you're at right now, what you're doing, first of all. Well, where I'm at right now, I am a sports reporter. So I built my own like sports uh, show. It's mm -hmm. called Eyes on the Game. Mm -hmm. So I do interviews um, on camera. I started off as it was a radio show and then um, it, I turned it into more on camera because now with YouTube and everything. And then I also co-host the Schmozone podcast, the t-shirt that you're repping very nicely yes. with my boyfriend, uh, the Schmo, his name, he goes by David or Dave on the podcast, <laughs> but I co-host that with him and I still do my interviews for my YouTube now, but it started off on the radio. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, very cool. And, and I'll dig into some of that stuff and what you're doing, especially coming up this week. You've got an amazing life right now, flying all over the world for the, for the uh, UFC. But um, just take us back. You obviously swam at one point in your life and you uh, just from knowing you, you've got um, aspirations to kind of get back into some swimming again. You've got some pretty interesting goals and lofty goals for yourself. But talk to us about where swimming started for you. Swimming started when I was five years old. I My parents told me it was because I used to get sick a lot and they wanted me to uh, get healthy and strong and build my immune system because I was like really skinny and I would turn purple. Like that's how cold I would get. And like I mentioned, I would always get sick. So they wanted to find a sport that wouldn't really like damage, you know, our joints or anything. And it would be good for us, little did they know, and this is according to them, uh, they didn't expect my sister and I, I have an older sister and we swam together. They didn't expect that we would become good swimmers. So they're like, oh wow, now you guys are competing like every month, we gotta go to LA all the time. And um, so yeah, it started when I was five and it ended the club swimming, year round swimming ended when I was 14. So back in 2006, and then I swam high school my sophomore, junior year, one state my junior year. I begged them, can I still swim? You know, I'm getting scholarship offers, and that's really what I wanted to do. I wanted to, like you, what you got to accomplish, like make it to the Olympics and turn pro. That was my dream ever since I was like nine years old, and they said no, so I'm not going to argue with that. And um, then I had to pivot and find another way. Would you consider your parents, and I'm, I'm sure you love your parents, so it's not, I'm not asking you to talk negatively about them, but at the time, would you consider them to be overbearing in any way? Were they, were they pushy or forcing you or what was going on at the time? If this, and I'm actually glad and surprised, like you're the first one to really ask me more about this. Um, it, and it's a good thing. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I, if this will help someone else that was in the shoes I was in, you know, I, this is why I'm going to say this, but um, we're great now. But at the time it was, yeah, very overbearing in the sense where, um, well, A, they're from China. So my dad, you know, he grew up in China and we know that's like 100% different than here. And then my mom from Taiwan. So coming to, you know, America, everything was new for them. I don't think that they fully understood, right, the power of sports um, and, you know, athletes. So it, it was very strict where I know they wanted the best for us, where it was like sometimes when we got first place, it was not good enough for them. You know, it's like, oh, first place, but how come you didn't break the record? Did you mm -hmm. drop time? Did you, 
did you drop enough time? You're 14 years old. Why didn't you make Olympic trials yet? It was like that mentality where it's like, oh crap, you know, I got first place, but did I drop enough time? Did I do good enough? Oh, am I good enough to be able to swim tomorrow or am I going to be forced to quit? Yeah. Yeah. And, and we see that a lot, honestly, you know, there, there are young athletes all around the country uh, and I do swim clinics around the country. So I get to meet a lot of young kids and a lot of parents and, and you do see it from time to time where the parents are, are very overbearing and, and, and not, I don't think they mean it in a negative sense. They just want the best for their kids, obviously, but it does put a lot of pressure on the kids and to be great at, 14 is is a lot different than being great at 21 22 when when it really counts and it really matters and and there's a long period of time in between that where um you've got to develop and you've got to grow and and i see a lot of parents pushing their kids very early trying to specialize trying to be champions at a very young age when it's not absolutely necessary it takes time to develop to get to that point right oh absolutely and i think also like when I couldn't swim anymore after my junior year. So I was only swimming three months. And the year I won state, I was actually sick with pneumonia. My parents were like, no, like, please don't swim this season. Like you're, you know, you're going to end up in the hospital. The doctors are like, no. And I was like, no, like I, you know, I couldn't swim club anymore. And I was like, you know what? I want to do this for myself. I need to win something. Like I've trained since I was five years old. I, I need to just finally be like, okay, I, I at least accomplished something or I at least won state, whatever. Yeah. But after I quit for good after that, I mean, for good until now, but um, I was also burnt out mentally where I was just so drained and it was like, okay, one day, you know, I can swim the next day they're telling me I need to quit or find another coach. And then I went and tried to find another coach. And then they're like, no, like you're done. And, but they never gave me like the exact reason. So throughout all those years, I was just making scenarios up in my head, like guessing like, okay, why, why couldn't I do this anymore? And I was like, I ended up depressed. Mm. Yeah. So what, what would you say to parents then, you know, people that have young kids that are very good at that age and you see them making the same mistakes, what advice do you think you could give them at that point in time? Well, that if their kid or their child loves swimming and is self-motivated and is having fun, most importantly, especially at that crucial age where what happens during, you know, those like early preteen to teen years, yep. it does affect them even later on in life. Like they may even have flashbacks and it does shape who they are. So I think if they are having fun and it's not like, you know, they're going there to slack off, like they're working hard, just support them and don't put that much pressure. I think having pressure is a good thing, but at that age, like over pressure where it's like, oh, are they going to force me to quit tomorrow if I don't get first place at junior Olympics, you know? And that's something that I, I felt, and it's not necessarily what maybe what my parents were thinking, but it mm -hmm. came off that way to me yeah. at that age. Yeah. Now you had a couple of teammates and also some competitors that did go on to have yeah. a lot of success in college and even on the international stage. Just mention a couple of your competitors or a couple of your teammates that, that actually kicked on and did some really big things in swimming. Well, most notably, I mean, and I'm very proud of him, right? I like, we went to zones together when we were 10, 12 years old. I trained with him when he first moved from Montana to Las Vegas. Uh, Cody Miller, uh -huh. you know, so I like I'm super impressed like he literally built like a swim empire. So congratulations to him. Mm -hmm. um, and I like, because you know, a lot of people and I don't want to be someone out there that's like, Oh, I, I swam with this person or that person and you didn't really swim with them. You know, yeah. it's yeah. And they're kind of over exaggerating like, Oh, just because I was in the same team, a different group. No, it was like, um, 
And the only memories I have are up to 14 years old, of course. But during that time, it was always me and him in swim practice, like competing against each other. He was always a breaststroker and I was like butterfly freestyle sprinter. But it was always like us, you know, especially when we were in the J.O. group still, when we were at that age, um, just racing each other in practice. He was super fast at kicking in practice. Like mm -hmm. he always kicked my ass, <laughs> you know, but um yeah it's really cool to see what he's made from this sport I know he's always had a uh pure love for swimming and wanted to do this forever and I believe that he's about to be a dad so congratulations to him um and then there's some other ones like I raced Haley Anderson um uh -huh. at Zones when I was yeah I was what 12 or something and then race like like Andy was, um, I believe she's an Olympian now too. Mm -hmm. um, and a few others, like I, I would have to pull, you know, the names yeah. up, but um, I definitely, you know, see a lot of people that I grew up racing against, even Cindy Tran actually, sorry with Tran. that. Yeah, yeah uh, we, it was always like, uh, you know, me and her in the 50 free, um, 50 free, 100 free. I know she was a great backstroker as well, but I'm just speaking from, you know, like the early ages when I swam, uh, 10 to 14. And actually her former coach, Laurel, shout out to Laurel um, <laughs> in Arizona. We kind of reconnected all these years later and it's like, holy crap, like I remember you and vice versa. <laughs> And yeah, seeing like what Cindy has done and um, what a lot of them has done that I've grown up swimming with and being on the zone team with, it, it's really cool to see. So let's fast forward a number of years. You have these incredible experiences as a kid. You, you love swimming, you're passionate about it, but you are forced to quit at the age of 14. Um, years later now, uh, you, you get the itch and you get the bug back again. And it's kind of like you're at a point where, I mean, you've always been the type of person that loves the challenge and, and has pushed their limits. And, and now you've, you've kind of got that bug to jump back in and try and qualify for the Olympic trials in uh, 2024. Is that correct? Yes. I know it's like a lot of people, especially now, the ones that didn't know me when I competed, because I could show you pictures and I think I have showed you pictures, mm -hmm. but they'll be like, no way. Like they'll kind of look at me and prejudge me now and be like, there's no way, you know, you were an athlete, whatever. And it's like, okay, doubt me now. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, I, I love it. Um, but yeah, so Basically, ever since I quit, I quit, I fell into, you know, a bit of a depression. Mm -hmm. I even bleached my hair blonde. I didn't know who I was anymore. And I was like bullied and stuff growing up. So I'm like, oh my God, who am I? Right. Um, but I've always still like loved swimming and I pursued sports broadcasting because I was like, you know what? It's so challenging. And it forces me to want to be better. And it was the first thing that lit a fire in my eyes and gave me that same fire that swimming did. Because I tried like other jobs and stuff and nothing gave me just that like fire in me. And, and that's how I knew like, oh, okay, I love sports broadcasting because it reminds me of swimming in a way. Um, but it was basically up until I met my boyfriend, the Schmo. Uh, David and you know late last year we had a talk and I was crying to him and you know just told him how I so miss swimming you know after all these years and when I train for something I, I want to train for a goal not just train just to go through the motions and you know I give all the credit to him he's the one that like really supports me in coming back and trying to achieve that dream for the you know 14 year old me yeah yeah well it's it's incredible it's a it's very brave how old are you now just turned 29 i know 
Oh, yeah, well, no, you're I mean, not. You're, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> well, not really. I mean, there's a, there's swimmers these days that are going well into their thirties, and and it's certainly possible. Um, the challenge that you have, obviously, is that you've taken so much time off, but um, you've given yourself four years for this goal, which is nice. But you're also around. You're surrounded by incredible athletes all the time. You're you're um, you're you're around these MMA guys and girls. Um, who were some of the most incredible athletes in the world. What are some of the lessons that you've taken from them that maybe you could apply to this journey that you're on now? That's a great question. And that actually is another motivation of my like being surrounded by, you know, the great athletes like Stipe, like Daniel Cormier, mm -hmm. uh, like Valentina, we had her on our podcast yesterday, just being Henry Cejudo, right? Yeah. Who won Olympic gold, uh, flyweight, bantamweight, shout out to Henry too, because I, I did, you know, have a talk with him and told him like, me getting back into this, like it, I look up to him and his mindset. And what I learned from these incredible fighters is that their mindset is everything. And of course, you know, being able to like take care of their bodies and train correctly, but it's also that confidence that you have to have and that focus and determination and if you really want something like you go and make it happen like look at Sipa he's also a part-time firefighter and even Jermaine Durandamy you know she's also a police officer it's mm -hmm. like but they're able to make it work and still perform at the elite level and even at the ages that they're at like DC into his 40s and still you know being at that championship level because of not only, you know, their hard work, of course, but their mentality and their will. Um, and that's something that I'm really um, inspired by. Awesome. I love it. Beautiful story. And, and and I wish you the best. And you know that I'm in your corner as well. I'm a big supporter. And, and yeah, I'm shout out to you for all that's <laughs> watching. Brett is well, like, you know, I'm sure a lot of people in you being a great swim coach a lot of people are probably like oh my goal is this or that and for some of them in your mind you're probably like oh my god you got a long way to go and I'm aware of that and I don't want to just be a talker and be like oh yeah I want to do this and not be working behind the scenes and I am uh very hard so I appreciate your support and it keeps me going and then also Kasha gotta give a shout out to her she's yeah. been such a great like training partner and I use that term loosely because she kicks my ass like <laughs> she's so fast so I'm like not not really training partner but kind of I swim in the lane next to her and Kasha, Kasha Wilk right yes and she's headed to the ISL what team is she on for with the yeah. ISL the New York Breakers. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Be, be yeah. Well, you know, the, the other good thing is you get to spend a lot of personal time around fighters. And so you get to see certain things that maybe us as the regular, um, you know, person out in the world may not get to see, you get to see behind the scenes. So tell me this behind the scenes with the fighters, do you get to see the ones um, that are truly confident in their abilities and the ones that are doubting themselves. Like, can you see the difference between somebody that is going to go out and win a fight as opposed to somebody that is about to get their ass kicked? Can you notice that in them? Well, you know, it's crazy to see that because on our podcast yesterday, Valentina actually pointed that out where she's about to fight Jennifer Maya and Jennifer Maya fought Joanne Calderwood and she was describing what she could see in Jennifer Maya where it's like you know she had this just vision this focus where it's like the can't lose type of look yeah. um, and, and we all saw kind of what happened there because initially Joanne was supposed to fight Valentina for the title um but yeah, I, I think also in MMA, what I notice too sometimes is even like an overconfidence, right? Where maybe a fighter, um, like it's good to have confidence, but they think they're a lot better than they are. And then you see them get humbled. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 That, I mean, that, that can happen to all of us, I guess. We get, oh, we, yeah. get, we get blindsided by how good we are at, at one point, and then we come up against some real competition. It's like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. 
Um, but it's cool. Well, who's uh, who's a dream for you to sit down and, and interview in the MMA world? Uh, I think a lot of people would say like Conor McGregor, right? Sure. Because I mean, he's Conor. So yeah, definitely Conor. I think Nate Diaz would be pretty cool. Like Nick and Nate together mm -hmm. yeah um in sports i would love to interview stone cold steve austin all right or, or wwe sorry if i said sports because because some people get triggered like <laughs> oh, it's not really you know and then the uh internet comment wars start so listen you're uh, about to head on a, a journey at the end of the week where are you where are you going uh back to abu dhabi to fight island so we can came back last Sunday and then we go back uh, Friday morning, 6 a.m. flight. That's pretty cool. How did you end up getting, you know, a pass to, to be on that flight to go out to Fight Island? That's, that seems pretty exclusive to me. You know what? When you're with the schmo, it all happens. <laughs> That's true. So I'm just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for obviously Dana White, the UFC, um, and to have an incredible podcast, The Schmo Zone, with my boyfriend, The Schmo. Um, he's been a very positive influence in my life, um, whether it's, you know, swimming, broadcasting, everything. He's uh, really pushed me to be better and to get better and to step outside of my boundaries. So, Where is The Schmo? What's he up to today? You know what? I, I think uh, he's doing some business emails. Uh, okay. You know, he gets really in the zone or yeah. he's cutting some clips. Yeah, that, that's an impressive part of what you guys do. I mean, you're, you're all in-house. You do it all yourselves, right? Oh, yeah. It's uh, basically a two-man team. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's only us two. I know a lot of people maybe assume that we have like, 10 people working for for us or some people doing social like no it, it's really just us and then before that it was like you know I was doing everything myself like before I met him and like yeah. filming press play running to the other side to do the interview then stopping the camera then like writing using editing reporting doing everything Awesome. I love it. Now, uh, just on Fight Island itself, the, the ISL is about to kick off uh, next week, and a lot of these athletes are going to go into quarantine. You've been into quarantine at Fight Island. Give us some tips on how to get through quarantine. Oh, my. <laughs> well, try to sleep a lot because depending on what time you arrive, because we've done it where we've flown at night and mm -hmm. then gotten there at night which those 48 hours seem a lot longer for some reason than us, like last time we flew daytime and then got there during the daytime. So it felt slightly shorter, but make sure you may, if you can bring some at home, like um, workout stuff or maybe a jump rope, like, you know, to be able to do something or um, if there's good like movies to download or watch on your laptop, just cause I don't know, like if you could, right, bring a DVD player or something, but, um, or books, but make sure, yeah, just to sleep, um, relax, but bring some workout stuff and, you know, books or entertainment. Is there a period of time where you're just circling the room and, and just pacing to get out of there? Yeah, our, our first, <laughs> the first time we went to Abu Dhabi, it was like, at, towards the end, every like two minutes trying to look out the people because we can't open the door right oh, wow. like there's cameras so it's like if you open the door and step out they'll see you and then I don't want to know what happens but <laughs> so we're like looking through the people like come on come on and then we're like waiting for the food to be delivered cherishing every bite of the food you know <laughs> <laughs> so it's like trying to count sheep towards the end but if you could try to sleep more because that's what we did this last time and it felt like it went by faster because we were just sleeping a lot then did two workouts the schmo did more workouts than me i admit it and uh, i was so jet lagged and then we were free 
Nice. I love it. Well, uh, super exciting fights coming up and I'm, I'm glad you're going to be there to watch all those, but just give us some last minute advice of, of, you know, somebody that may have been in your position and, and why, why put yourself out there? Like why chase your dreams at the, at your age? Why not just move on with your life? Why, why go back to swimming and have this goal of making the Olympic trials? Why are you doing it for yourself? Well, because I never want to be that person that when I'm 80 years old, uh, and I know it's weird to think this way, but it's true, like inevitably, we're all going to get older, right? And to be 80 years old one day and thinking back and being like, man, what if, you know, I could have still tried when I was in my 20s, because that's technically your prime, like physically, and um, just kind of having that what if, e even that thing that lingered in my mind these past, you know, 12 years when I didn't swim and just like, oh, what if, how good could I have been? Would I have achieved my dreams? And when you have something to fight for and something that motivates you, you know, then it's like it, mind over matter for a lot of things. I mean, and I know it also is like talent, hard work and whatnot, but it's just like, if you want something bad enough, why not try, you know? And sometimes the best things in life come when you um, step out of your comfort zone and step out of that fear of comfortability. And, you know, it's like when I worked a quote nine to five, I was like, no, I, I want to pursue sports. You know, I freaking saved up money, quit my comfortable job and pursued this. And then it was the best decision ever, but it's like, it's not going to be easy, but it'll be worth it. And the things that are worth it are, you got to step out of that comfort zone. Yeah, I love it. It's a great message for all of us. And look, there's no guarantee that any of us are going to succeed in anything that we do in life. But if we don't try, then we're certain of failure. And uh, yeah. the, just the mere fact that you're out there, uh, and I've seen photos of you out, out in Abu Dhabi, you know, in the pool, working out, training, you know, while you're out there working as well. So it's very impressive. Um, I think you're a great role model for a lot of young women out there and, uh, and people that just want to pursue their dreams of um, something that they may have left behind that they feel like, hey, I've got a, a small window here. I've got to, I've got to chase this while it's still open. So um, really impressive. Like I said, I'm a big fan of yours and would, would be glad to help in any way that I can. And um, thanks for being on the podcast today. Thank you so much. Yeah, I had a great time. Great questions. I appreciate it. Thanks, Helen. Take care. Thank you. Bye.